Coming up on How We Built It, I'm joined by US-based health and well-being organization Humana, who are adopting Power BI and Azure to create a single self-service reporting platform that builds a unified profile of their members so that they can proactively reduce their health risks with access to key services in healthcare. Now we're gonna look at how they've approached self-service reporting for their team from building query optimized schemas and identifying the right filters and visualizations. To do that, I'm joined by business intelligence engineer, Sean Chandler from Humana. Welcome to Microsoft Mechanics. Hi, thanks, it's great to be here. And thanks again for joining us today. So not only is Humana helping people at retirement age or with disabilities get the healthcare coverage they need, but it also has an initiative to make its members healthier. So what role then does the data team play in all of this? So we want all of our members to be able to achieve their best health, which means building the most complete profile we can of our members across multiple dimensions to get ahead of potential health risks while also meeting their existing needs. And something that Humana looks at very closely is something called social determinants of health, which are upstream influencers of health outcomes that describe our members' living conditions, their communities, and their social interactions. And to understand social impacts on health, we screen our members for things like food insecurity, loneliness, financial strain, housing quality, neighborhood safety, and other things. And these things are important because one would expect a person without access to healthy food and good housing and transportation to their medical appointments to have worse health outcomes than a member who does have all of these things. So we're curious about social determinants of health and how they correlate with other things that we know about our members, like their existing conditions, their age, their ethnicity, their gender, and a whole range of other variables. And when we find positive matches for these social needs, we can intervene. For example, if a member is identified as food insecure, an intervention that Humana might take could be to connect them with a local food pantry. Or if we know that a member requires regular medical supervision, but they don't have reliable transportation to get to their appointments, maybe we can intervene by connecting them to community transportation. So how are you then approaching that insights challenge? What was your starting point then on the data team? Well, we had to solve for a number of things. Uh, we have multiple external partners and internal teams screening members for social determinants of health. And all that data lives in seven to nine disparate data sources. And there's not a lot of consistency in survey formats. The questions could differ from survey to survey as well as their scales or response types. And some of this data goes directly into our on-premise data warehouse, while other data might go directly to specific departments or users via CSV or Excel files. And they then use a variety of BI tools and business logic to clean up and analyze that data. And of course, different data stories build up over time from all of these different pathways. And it gets even more complex if we want to bring in data on member demographics and health conditions, as this lives in other data sources too. All right, so this sounds like a big challenge. Now, how did the data team then solve for all this? So our first step was to rationalize these different data sources and build the business logic to properly relate the questions that map to a single social determinant like food insecurity or isolation. And we also needed to rationalize these responses so that we knew which member screened positive or negative for a given social need. This helped us create a master screenings data set of member level data in our data warehouse which enabled us to connect with other related data sets by matching a unique member ID to other tabular data sources that have the same ID. From there, we could ingest a cleansed data report into our Power BI via ODBC, resulting in a single self-reporting business insights platform to explore the data further. As you can see here on our dashboard, which shows a collective view of member screenings across all of our social determinants. And this initial version, of the self-service platform took a few weeks to stand up, but within three months, we were largely in the state that you see today. And that's a short amount of time given the complexity of where we were coming from and also what we're used to doing with other tools at Humana. And it really sounds like a lot of kind of complex data behind that dashboard. It was really fast, I think it looks like, to get it all stood up. but. How did you approach things like query performance given all the data coming in? Well, one of the big challenges that we wrestled with in the beginning was that because this was a brand new and constantly evolving data set, we could only guess at the eventual size of the data model. Uh, and it would probably be easier if I showed you. So the first version of this report ran just fine, but as time went on and the model grew from tens of thousands of rows to over 1.3 million rows, Features that used to load in seconds were suddenly taking close to a minute. And of course, that's not the kind of user experience that we wanted visitors to have. Our problem was that the data set we created ended up being quite wide. 
almost 120 columns, in fact. And our main metric, social determinant screenings, was spread out among dozens of columns. So in order to slice by a specific domain in my report, I had to write this really complex DAX measure just to derive my most important number. And this conditional logic, of course, brought my report to a crawl. So I knew I needed to try something different. Fortunately, this report was a great chance for me to familiarize myself with one of Power BI's most incredible tools, the Power Query Editor. I was able to take a big table like this and just remove what I didn't need by applying all these steps and then pivot my metric columns into a single column, as you can see here, called screenings. And this allowed me to conserve the overall size of the model while greatly improving the report's performance. So then I just spun off all the other dimensions into smaller tables and joined those back to the screening SPAC table in the schema editor, as you can see here. All the other tables in my schema contain the attributes of my data set, things like age group, division, and gender. And my screenings metric resides in this fact table where all I have to do now is just sum it. Well, that fact table is now 11 million rows because of my pivoting the data, it's much easier for Power BI to sum 11 million rows in a narrow table than to run a bunch of conditional logic on only 1.3 million rows. And so this allowed me to condense my original DAX code from dozens of lines to just a single line of code with no if-then logic at all. That's great. So going back to the dashboard itself, I can see it's a great looking report. But how did you build it then to meet all the needs of the users at Humana? So from a design standpoint, I knew one of the most important features of the tool was to let users filter screenings by each social determinant of health domain. And since I knew that this was so vital, I knew that we needed to set this filter apart from all the other filters in the report, which is why I thought it'd be really cool to represent them as interactive icons and a banner that would immediately draw users' attention. To pull this off, my business users helped me select appropriate icons for each domain, and I put those into a SharePoint folder, which I can connect to from Power BI. With all of the images stored in Power BI as web URLs, I downloaded the Chiclet Slicer from the Power BI Custom Visual Marketplace, which is a really neat tool that allows developers to use icons or images as filters instead of just text or numeric values. And that way, if users want to see food and security screenings, all they have to do is just click the Apple icon. How did you standardize the approach in terms of filtering out those different views uh, within the report? Well, we worked closely with our business partners for weeks, and we were able to carefully curate the list of filters in the right-hand filter pane to include the, only the most important fields. But we also knew we had a group of users who needed to break down screenings quickly by these different values in order to best serve their customers. But we also couldn't expect users to just sit and manually filter through all 50 states, for example, just to find the insights that they needed. By creating a pivoted DAX table of the most important fields, I was able to give users control over the horizontal bar chart on that page. And with that table, I was able to create multiple relationships to my schema, as you can see here. And I'm connecting the new pivoted dimension table I just created to my primary dimension table, DIM main. So now if we go back to the dashboard, you'll see that this now allows users to select the axis on the chart and change it from something like division to region almost instantly in order to see the top screenings drivers. But beyond filters, I also needed to think about which Power BI visuals could help me convey information to users about the report itself. So one novel idea I had was to use the tree map visual. Now, although it may not look like it, these three nondescript blocks on the left-hand side of my report are actually separate tree maps that link to tooltips for filters, metrics, and social determinant of health definitions. So now, when users hover over the tree map, they see a pop-up with definitions for the various social determinants of health. This is really nice to see, and I can imagine then as, as more and more stakeholders uh, start to see the tool and you introduce it to them, they're going to want more and more views of data. So. How do you accommodate their kind of variable needs and kind of additional needs they have on the data set? So one of the great things about Power BI is its ability to help users ask questions of their data. Of course, curiosity can also lead to reports becoming cluttered with visuals that attempt to answer every potential question the visitors could have at once. So if we go back to the dashboard, I can show you how Power BI's bookmarking capability helped me capture all the views my business partners requested on one page. If you look here, you can see that I have a ton of visuals overlaid on top of each other, and it looks very chaotic. However, if I enable the bookmarks pane and the toolbar and the selection pane, 
I can hide and unhide visual objects on the page and then save those settings as bookmarks. So note that when I click the screenings over time bookmark, several visuals vanish and I'm left only with the ones that I want as indicated by the eye icon. If I switch to a new bookmark, new visuals are hidden and others reappear. So bookmarks allowed me to quickly create an executive summary with, within the report without bogging down the tools, performance, or over, overwhelming visitors with too many visuals at once. However, as users ask for new views, one of the most important things that I've found with Power BI is the ability to do ad hoc querying. Because at the end of the day, the real value for us in Power BI is in the flexibility that it gives us to ask, ask questions and conduct ad hoc analysis. In the past, a pain point for our BI tools has been that it could take weeks to update a report with new material. By contrast, as you can see here, over the past eight to 10 months, we've iterated 20 versions of this tool and the second tab of this report represents a more ad hoc exercise. As you can imagine, just knowing where our members are being screened isn't enough. In a perfect world, every, every positive screening for an SDOH need should result in some sort of intervention being taken to help meet that need. But in the sample data, it looks like we're only meeting 87% of those needs. So to dig into this, we conducted an exercise on the fly using business logic developed in face-to-face -face meetings. And with the query editor, I was able to build in that business logic in seconds in the form of a custom column that mapped each screening's provider to a specific intervention, like a community resource referral or a toolkit. So when we go back to the dashboard, what we determined from that exercise, however, was that not every source of SDOH screenings could be mapped to a known intervention. So selecting the no known interventions bar filters the information on the left and tells us that source one does not appear to have a known outcome for members who screened positive. Exercises like this have helped spur action to reach out to those vendors and identify their mode of outreach in order to close a potential gap in securing the health needs of our members. All of this you did in such a short amount of time from a complex starting point, but what's next then for the data team at Humana? So for social determinants of health, we have all sorts of cool things planned. Mapping that SDOH data to other master data sets from across our organization will help us get more robust insights about the members we identify with social needs and also what other chronic health conditions they may have so that we can be more proactive in meeting their unique needs. And as the report grows and becomes more complex, I'm also looking forward to considering how something like Power BI's Q&A feature can help users find what they need just using natural language. Of course, our longer term goal is bringing our data into Azure. That way we won't have to worry so much about data exports and imports and data refreshes will be almost instant. So we'd still apply the exact same ETL and business logic to our orchestration pipeline via Azure Databricks. But from here, we'll be able to standardize reports and data on Power BI and retire our legacy BI tools. And also we can tie our data to other common data sets to be able to quickly isolate and target key populations based on business critical data. And we can also use AD groups to administer access to Humana's citizen analysts so that they can start to self-serve for their needs and do their own proactive analysis. Thanks, Sean. And this is a fantastic implementation. And thanks again for joining us today, really to share all the progress that you've made with the Humana team and also your plans for the future. Of course, if you want to learn more about Power BI, be sure to check out powerbi.com. And you can also check out our Power Platform series at aka.ms slash mechanics power platform. And by the way, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already to Microsoft Mechanics. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.